I think the country, everyone, should follow the lead of women of color. I would say to white women, follow women of color. It's been a busy couple weeks in American politics. With the midterm elections last week and the sheer amount of news to cover, I was having a hard time deciding what I should talk about in today's video. Over the last few years of doing YouTube videos, I've noticed the tone and tenor of leftist media has changed. Leftist media used to be more implicit, and they would make overtures towards anti-white politics, but they wouldn't fully and explicitly embrace them. I talk a lot about escalation on this channel, and nothing has escalated further and faster in the last few years than the levels of anti-white sentiment we're seeing from the American left. We've gone from veiled illusions and praise for the supposed benefits of diversity straight into heavy-handed attacks on white men. And now, the progressive stack is breaking down even further. For a while, there was a hierarchy of victimhood. If you were a woman, if you were non-white, disabled, etc., all of those things increased your victimhood score. The more of a victim you were, the higher you ranked on the progressive stack, and the more power you had in far-left circles. And for a while, white women could be a part of this. White women could band together with the beautiful coalition of diversity, waging political war against the evil, oppressive white male patriarchy. But that's changing. White women are quickly falling out of favor with the radical left. These white women believed that they could be allies, that they could march arm in arm with the diversity coalition. Well, they're increasingly finding out that they are no longer welcome at the progressive table. Why is this happening? Well, America is becoming more and more diverse. In other words, less white every day. As the leftist diversity coalition grows in numbers, they're deciding that they no longer need the help or assistance of white women any longer, especially when the majority of white women still vote Republican and still support President Trump. We see the intellectual underpinnings of this split put forward in publications designed for the elite, such as the New York Times. In an October 6 op-ed titled, White Women Come Get Your People, author Alexis Grinnell attacked white women for continuing to vote Republican. She attacked white women for acting in racial solidarity, as opposed to gender solidarity. White women are being moved from the victim class into the oppressor class before our eyes. And that's a very important transition. Politically, this is good news for everybody. Ideally, the anti-white vitriol of the American left will push white women to the right politically. Why would white women support an American left that openly hates them, openly opposes white people, and sees them as the beneficiaries of supposed white privilege and power? In today's video, I want to look more into this phenomenon, the fracturing of the progressive stack, and the assignment of white women to the oppressor class. Fewer people read the New York Times than watch our friends over at Now This. So, while we could explore Ms. Grinnell's NYT article in further depth, instead, let's look at a video posted just a few days ago by Now This Her, titled, quote, Women of color are saving democracy. Not only is the video format easier to work with for our purposes, but we'll be able to look at the more subtle repudiations of white women. And hopefully, you'll come away from this video more well-equipped to notice this very important shift that the left is making. When you see leftist propaganda or listen to leftist rhetoric, you're going to begin seeing that white women are increasingly absent from the progressive stack. And hopefully, this will help you in your conversations with the white women that you may know that still think of themselves as warriors for social justice. And we'll talk about how this shift on the left should be analyzed and responded to by conservatives and people on the right. But first, it won't protect you from being thrown out of the progressive stack, but they will help you defend your online privacy and security. It's Virtual Shield. With Christmas approaching, you're probably looking forward to relaxing with family and friends. Unfortunately, hackers don't take time off. Just a few weeks ago, it was discovered that a security vulnerability on Tumblr made it possible for hackers to make off with users' login credentials and other private user information. Whenever you use a device, your cell phone, tablet, or laptop, on a public Wi-Fi network, you're putting yourself at risk of having your personal information, including financial data, logged and stolen. You need to protect yourself online, and that's why I use Virtual Shield, the easiest VPN in the world to use. It's one of the fastest VPNs out there, and their strict no-log policy protects all of its users from data breaches. With Virtual Shield, you have the right to remain private. This Black Friday month, Virtual Shield is offering 40% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons. Plus, don't forget about Identisafe, which gives you the ability to block off computer microphone and camera access from any unwanted spies and hackers. There's no reason not to keep you and your family safe online, protecting yourself from entities public and private. Stop hackers and spies in their tracks with Virtual Shield, and keep all of your browsing data private, the way it should be. VirtualShield.com slash also today for 40% off. They're the only VPN company that I trust. All right, back to the collapse of the progressive stack. It's like witnessing a precarious game of Jenga end in slow motion, tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. Women of color are the saving graces of democracy, and we demonstrated that uh, in the midterms. Women of color are the saving graces of democracy. And that's right, white man. You're just getting in the way of women of color saving our democracy. And you too, white women. It's 2018, and you can't sit with us. I love the fact that her evidence for women of color being the saving grace of democracy isn't that they have good policies, good ideas, or positive changes they want to make. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Women of color, according to 
her are good for democracy because they're women of color. Think I'm hyperbolizing? <laughs> well, let's keep watching and you'll see. I'm calling 2018 the year of women of color in politics. Hmm, she's talking about women of color, non-white women, and the text here says diverse women. I thought diversity was supposed to be about including everybody. It seems to me like diversity actually means fewer white people. Bunch of firsts, first native uh, congresswoman. To make sure that we all feel represented. That is so important. First Muslim congresswoman. We are done waiting. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Let's get to work. Youngest Congress member. Okay, first of all, I thought we already had a Native American congresswoman. Is now this really just going to ignore Elizabeth Warren like that? Frankly, I'm offended at the cultural erasure going on here, and this is not okay. That feel when even your own propaganda outfit sees through your BS. Also, they showed three of these brave women that have won their elections giving speeches, but I didn't hear anything of those speeches in the way of policy. It was all self-congratulatory nothingness. This is an important point. These women aren't being celebrated for their ability or achievement or goals. They're being celebrated purely because of their identity, because of their race and religion. More than that, they're being celebrated specifically because they are not white. The left wants to fundamentally transform America, and their ideal country is one where white people have no power, no elected officials, and no representation. The right needs to realize that we aren't being attacked by the left on the grounds that we have bad policy or they disagree with our stance on taxes and issues, etc. No, the left is explicitly racializing politics. They're making the choice, in their words, between white people or non-white people. And no amount of shying away from that is ever going to convince them to stop attacking you. You can say you support the meritocracy a billion times and that you're totally not racist. You're a good conservative that doesn't see color. But if you're white, you will always be attacked because of it. Conservatives have to recognize that the only way to win, politically, is by engaging with your opposition on the same playing field. As the left continues to ramp up their non-white base with anti-white politics, conservatives that pretend race doesn't matter are going to continuously be proven wrong and ineffective. Race is real and race matters. And in a multiracial society like America now is, racial allegiances are the foundation for political alignment. Conservatives must stop denying that basic fact and instead embrace it, accept it. All politics are identity politics. Look at the left. Do you really think you're going to convince them to stop embracing identity politics by begging and pleading with them? No, of course not. Because using identity politics is a winning strategy, which is why the left does it. And conservatives will continue to lose until they realize it too. And then there's scores and scores of state legislators all of those are because, not because the Democratic Party blessed this group of women, but because they answer the call to serve and they are ready to govern with their full humanity in view. Again, what does that even mean? The reason the Democratic Party is electing more people of color is because the Democratic Party is becoming less white and the Republican Party is becoming more white. The Democratic Party is becoming, and this is what they're saying in this video, the party of non-whites. If that's what they become, where do you think that leaves the Republican Party? Implicitly, the Republican Party is becoming the party of white interests. And we have to dispel with the notion that somehow it's wrong or immoral to see white people as a group that has group interests. Black Americans are recognized as a group with political interests. Hispanics are recognized as a group with political interests. What's different about white people? Why can't white people be seen as a valid group with valid interests and concerns? Funny enough, the people who oppose this notion the most tend to call themselves colorblind conservatives. But most of them don't realize that by opposing white identity politics, you're only helping the left. The unilateral identity politics disarmament that conservatives fantasize about, where we all go back to just talking policy, it's not going to happen. The identity politics genie is out of the bottle. Please inform me how you plan on convincing the left to stop engaging in identity politics and return to talking tax policy and government spending. It's not going to happen. I knew there was something special about Stacey Abrams. From day one, she had people on the ground, knocking on doors, reaching out into rural, suburban, and urban areas of that state. She recognized that Georgia's on a precipice, that it's nearly majority people of color, that these people of color were unengaged, uninspired, unregistered, and if she turned her attention 
over time to building those kind of communities, they would come out for her. Yeah, but they didn't, and she lost the election. But notice the key admission there, that politics in a multiracial state like Georgia is all about racial turnout. Conservatives, they are telling you what the plan is. They are telling you their plan to get Democrats elected. They are explicitly stating that their plan to get big government, leftist politicians elected relies on racial politics. Are you just going to keep your head in the sand and pretend that this isn't happening? The turnout in Georgia was as high as a presidential year. She got more votes than Jason Carter when he ran for governor, and he's the grandson of a president. I want you to absorb that not just about me. It's about making sure that we start to evolve what leadership looks like. The most powerful core of the voters that came to the polls that delivered victories all across the country, women of color were the most progressive and the least represented group of people in this country. I would say to white women, follow women of color. Well said. I don't think I even really have to editorialize that very much. She's laying it all out there. They're enraged that white women would vote for the candidate that represents the interests of them, their families, their husbands, and their children, and not mindlessly cast their vote for the leftist POC candidate. There's a difference in terms of how white women and women of color show up at the polls, and it's about time that the progressive movement, the Democratic Party, and the whole country recognizes that it's women of color who are driving the change to create a country where everyone belongs. You'll have to forgive me for doubting that statement. I'm not getting the impression that white men and white women will feel like we belong in a country controlled by people that harbor viciously anti-white sentiments. I think that the American people want a set of leaders that are ready to courageously uh, advocate for an agenda that helps get us through the rough times that we're in. I think women of color are uniquely positioned to do that. I think the country, everyone, should follow the lead of women of color and uh, we'll build a coalition that can win in 2020. I'm not even going to do the double standard bit here because I think we all know how out of bounds it would be if a white person made a video telling people of color to fall in line and follow the voting habits of white people. That would be like a national scandal. What I'm more interested in is showing this message to the conservatives that still insist race doesn't matter as the left is building an explicitly non-white progressive coalition and kicking out white women. It should be clear to everyone that whether we like it or not, American politics are now identity politics. And as we see the left continue to push white women away and back towards the political right, this is only going to become more and more obvious. The parties have been racially stratifying for at least 30 years, and that is only going to continue. What that means for our democracy remains to be seen. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Make sure you hit the like button if you have not already, and subscribe if you have not already. And also, check me out on Minds.com. Minds.com is a free speech social network site, and I'm going to be posting my video links there from now on. So if you want to stay updated, you want to stay in the loop, follow me on Minds.com, and I'll see you there.